On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. It's nothing that you can do to stop a competitive edge. It's just in the water. Talk to us a little bit about that second time around because you yeah. guys had a fucking squad. Amari, Sean Marion, Joe Johnson, Q Rich. That small ball uh, was so fun to watch and play against. The incident in 2007, yeah. too. Talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> we, uh, look, it was a fun, obviously a, a fun team. A uh, team, I think, that kind of took the league by storm. You know, we were... Absolutely. You know, I think the year before, we're, at, we're one of the you know, maybe 126 games. So coming into that year, training camp, people thought, like, this isn't a playoff team. This is a team that, you know, might win 30-something games. Um, so we came out of the gates, I think, like, 31-5. and five. Um, You know, basically, you know, just running people out of the building. And we're playing a style and a pace that was, you know, was rare. And uh, I think it was exciting for the fans. It was fun to play that style, but also we were punishing people. And so, mm -hmm. um, but it was a young team, you know, a lot of guys who'd never played in the playoffs. Uh, got to the, you know, got to the conference finals. It got to actually play Dallas, my former team, uh, which was, which was difficult, but beat them in the, in the semifinals, then played the Spurs again in the, in the finals, lost 4-1. That was a series that Joe Johnson missed. Um, he played, I think, the last game, the clincher that we lost. Um, so that was tough. It was, you know, they were they were a terrific team. They were, they had a lot of experience as well, championship pedigree and all that. But, um, you know, it was tough. We were already a team that didn't play a deep bench at all. And so to lose a player as talented as you know, as Joe was, and, and especially he yeah. was coming on, you know, he was getting better as the season went on and was a pivotal kind of big guard who could make plays, be the backup. Great handlers. Guard. Great yeah, handlers. People don't realize how good he was. Joe Johnson was so, because he was just so mild-mannered and quiet, but mm. so talented. Just so much game, you know, so much game. Uh, and he was like 6'8", 240 pounds. Um, and, uh, and athletic when he wanted to be. So, um, you know, to lose him was tough. To lose him to Atlanta that summer was even tougher. Uh, mm -hmm. But th those years in Phoenix were incredible. Um, gave me, you know, some of the best memories of my career. We, we played an incredible playoff series. We never got over the hump, but I think we played in three or four Western Conference finals in, a, in a, an incredibly difficult Western Conference at the time. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't make the finals, but... You know, those were years when the team that came out of the East, we were beating by 30 twice. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know so we didn't get to the finals, but we, we also were a finals caliber team that just played in the Western Conference where you had to get through, you know, big teams. Touch, you touched on it tough because the West was definitely dominant back then, but for you to win back-to-back -back MVPs um, during that, that, that run in Phoenix was historical was amazing but it caught a lot of people by surprise talk to us about mm -hmm. that yeah i mean i think it was you know i i went from uh an all-star player to to an mvp and and you know i'll never put myself in the category of tim duncan or, or kobe bryant but i think those teams were special like our team we led the the league in scoring well, i think every year i was there and so the i think there was a you know, and I think also we, we forget in time, I don't know that I have to defend myself, but it's like, I forget in time that, you know, although like I average, you know, somewhere between 15 and 18 points in those years, you know, I, you know, I would close games and, and score in the fourth quarter a lot more and, and when, when it was needed. But I still came from the school of being a pass first point guard. So I was never like, I got to go out and get 25. No, I was always like, I want our team to flourish. I want guys to feel good and get easy buckets and I'll step up when I have to. And so th th those were special years where I think I took a jump as a player and became more of a threat in every way, but I also got to play with a team that fit really well. Maybe needed someone to create for them and then they could finish uh, and they could finish with the best of them so it was a perfect fit in a lot of ways that it, it, it highlighted my game highlighted their game and i think collectively we were very difficult to control talk to me a little bit about playing with uh amari stoudemire who mm. was a killer and then sean mm. marion too i mean those are two guys that you could put the ball anywhere 
They'd go get, rebound, yeah. play defense, played hard. What was it like playing with both those guys? Oh, it was, it was awesome. I mean, you know, especially for someone who loves to to find his teammates. You know, they both are incredible athletes. Amari, first of all, incredible feet for a big guy. Like, really could could move, change directions, and he had big hands and great hands. And so, you know, once once he got a piece of that ball, he could suck it in and. <laughs> You know, and was uh, could finish with the, with the best of them. One foot, mm-hmm. two foot. Um, he was incredible as a pick and roll partner of, of transition. Sean was, you know, Sean was an incredible athlete. Like his quickness, speed from end to end, his quickness, ability to guard multiple positions. Um, you know, he, he his second jump was almost as good as his first. So he he could do so many things athletically that were so uh, incredible. Um, so it, it, it was fun. I have these two two guys I could throw lobs to or find on the break for finishes and use their athleticism and speed to, to cause the defense problems. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was very fortunate to get to play with those two guys. Um, 06, Amari goes down uh, with a knee injury. Uh, Raja Bell, Dial, Barbosa, you win your second MVP. You're on the clever Slam magazine, and the, and the headline is, is Nash better than Stockton, kid? What were your thoughts like that? Because things were coming at you so fast. Like I said, you were a proven all-star. You're jumping into this MVP caliber, which, you know, only Hall of Famers basically, you know, get a chance to do. What was all that success like, and how did you take it, and how did you handle it? I always felt like an underdog, so I always, like, lost myself in, in like, you got to work. Like, if you have a big game or you had a big season, your MVP, I never was like, I, I made it. I was always like, I need to do more. I need to do it again. I need to continue to improving. So I never really, like, took in, like, the accolades like that. I always, like, move right back to my work, you know, right back to my process and just try to stay focused on what that is. Um, one, it helps you handle the pressure and expectations. But two, like, it keeps you keeps you sharp, keeps you growing, keeps you getting better. Uh, it simplifies everything. If you just know this is my process, I stick to the way I prepare and perform and recover. You know, then then you're thinking about what matters and not getting the, letting the rest of the stuff get in your head. So, yeah, I just I I'd always just reverted back to my work. Yeah, I had a great a great chemistry. Talk oh, about uh, how, how tough was it losing Amari? Yeah, I mean that second year Amari didn't play. We still made the conference finals. But, you know, Boris Diaw was phenomenal playing the five, the four, um, as a playmaker. Dropping triple doubles left and right, yeah. Hey, yeah, just... hey, Steve, hey, Steve, I don't mean to cut you off, Steve, but I told somebody yeah. this, and they asked me, who was the most talented player I've ever played with in my NBA career? And I told him, Boris Diaw. Mm, I don't know why yeah. people don't believe me. Yeah, he, he I mean, an incredible basketball player, um, incredible feel for the game, passer, uh, could could use that body to, you know, mm-hmm. to punish smaller guards when he got the switches and was was quick enough and clever enough with the ball, even though he only goes right to to roast, <laughs> right. <laughs> to, to, to roast big guys from the perimeter. Um, and just like he was, you know, he had the vision, like high, high level vision to pass IQ. and make plays. Yes. You know, so when I had the pick and roll with Amari, you know, I'd find Amari for finishes. When I had to pick and roll with, with Boris, you know, if I draw two defenders and threw it to him, now he's playing two on two, three on mm-hmm. two, and he's the point guard getting in the teeth of the defense, and he was he was incredible in that position. So uh, that, that was great. I mean, playing with all those guys, though, Sean, Amari, Boris, it felt great chemistry. Um, and then on top of the chemistry on the court, we always had fun. Like, we had great teams. We had great teams that would go out together, go eat together, go to the movies together, spend time mm-hmm. together. So there was always a little, yeah, there was always a little more on it. There was always a little more feeling in, in the dressing room. And, and I think that was something that made our team special as well. 2007, Amari's back. You guys win 61 games. He plays uh, the whole season. Uh, second round against the Spurs, just getting heated. 2-2 two, two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And uh, Ori takes one of the most blatant cheap shots. And this is coming from, I didn't really take cheap shots, I just made hard fouls. But he takes a blatant cheap shot that kind of changed the whole outlook and, 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 uh, of the series. And it was through suspensions and guys stepping on the court. Talk to us about that time because, I mean, obviously the Spurs went on to win. Uh, they beat Utah and then swept Cleveland. You know what I mean? I, I mm-hmm. thought you guys had a great chance to win a championship that year with mm-hmm. a hell of a team, the style of play. Mari was healthy. Talk to us about that second round matchup. 
Yeah, man. I mean, it's painful to think about. Um, <laughs> you know, like it, it is. I mean, I, I, I love life, and I'm like, life moves on, and I have a great life. But like, you know, we had a great opportunity there. I think we with that game, uh, we tied the series two two at their place, going mm-hmm. home, uh, going home to to regain home court, and uh, it was right at the end of the game. You know. Um, and then, and then Amari and Boris get suspended, and obviously we play incredibly small, leading all of Game 5 into the last minute, and they overtake us. Uh, you know, what could have been? But for whatever, you know, reason that things happen, uh, I always look at it like I could have made another play or two to get over the hump and didn't. Um, but definitely there was some, some, some luck involved, as there always is, and, and we didn't get the breaks, but... That's a it's a you know a team that always found a way to put themselves in a position to win and so maximum respect and and they uh, they got us again uh, mm. unfortunately. Just a little context that for those who don't know. So it's what game four. You guys end up winning that game, right? So we win game four in San Antonio. I actually watched right. it recently. Um, I okay. never watched I never watched anything, but. Uh, um, Bill Simmons does that book about basketball podcast and he asked me to watch that game and talk about it. So I watched it on my phone, like right away, like anxiety levels through the roof, just going back <laughs> like 13 years. Right. And, and it was alarming Crazy. to watch, you know, it was alarming to watch because we're supposed to be this fast paced team that, um, you know, pushed the tempo. And the reality is we played right into the Spurs hands. That game four in San Antonio, I think we, we either took or made five threes you know, we we won in San Antonio, one hundred one like ninety seven or one hundred three ninety nine. You know, I mean, we should have played so much faster. Um, you know, the way they played, how big and how dominant Timmy was. They always had another center alongside him, and um, you know, so to be in that position was incredible. Considering I don't think we played a style. It's contrary to kind of like how we remember it. That really, you know, represented our best opportunity to win, but. Uh, you know, hats off to the Spurs, always. Yeah. But it just shows, like I said, you won their way, and that and that's a sign of a team that can win a championship, you know, especially yeah. considering that was the Spurs, you know. So you get yeah. fouled, Amari and Boris step on the court. That NBA yeah. rule step on the court, which eliminates them from game five, and, yeah. you know, the, the, the rest is NBA history. So that's... It's, it's brutal. I mean, they, you know... They were reacting in shock, you know. They didn't like right. chase anyone down. They jumped, and then there's five or six assistant coaches all on the on the sideline. You have to go on the court to see around them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like you, it was right down the sideline, so they couldn't like look. They took a step out to see if I was okay, and you know, it wasn't definitely wasn't the spirit of the law. It was like a technicality in a sense. So yeah, it, was, it was unfortunate bullshit. we didn't get to play the series out. Absolutely. Um, any truth? to the rumor that you had spoken to KG that summer about coming to Phoenix? Yeah, there was there was a time ownership asked me to call him uh, and recruit him, would have been an incredible player to play with, but we didn't have the full cap slot that other teams did. So in a sense, I, I and Kevin tells this story too, that I told him I'm kind of embarrassed to call you because you'd have to take a pay cut to come here, but we'd love to have you. So we did have that conversation. He respected my honesty. Uh, the reality is we just, you know, he would have had to take a, you know, a much lower salary. So it was never really close to happening, I don't think. We tried to get him, too, around that time. That was 07. We was trying to get him mm-hmm. around that time, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The Warriors. He was, yeah, he said it was Phoenix. He said, who was it? Phoenix, us. He wanted to play with Kobe, too. And it mm-hmm. ended up being Boston. Yeah, I mean, that was a perfect situation, the way they kind of engineered that whole team and I mean it's almost crazy that they only won once right. yeah crazy as good as they were 2010 y'all finally beat the Spurs you meet the Lakers you play against Kobe in game six and Kobe go crazy talk about that mm. that was he was unbelievable in that game um you know it was it was uh I don't know that he had a great series until that game I, but I remember they won two games in LA thought we got a terrible whistle we came back to Phoenix and, and won, hand, won easily. Then mm-hmm. we come back to L.A. 2-2, and that's the game. We, we came flying back, tied the game with, like, a couple seconds left, had all the momentum, and then Kobe missed a game winner, air ball, and uh, Ron Artest ran in and caught the ball, like, around his waist and flipped it up off the glass. Yeah. W- wins, <laughs> wins the game. And, you know, like... 
Oh man, that was like another slap in the face for me. Just thinking, that was game like, five, right? Game five. I'm um, just thinking, like, you know, we get Kobe Bryant to miss the basket completely. You know, we have all the momentum, and we give up like a crazy offensive rebound, toss it up high off the glass. So we go back home. Um, you know, down three two, and Kobe has a as a classic. You know, he's making everything, making deep deep threes with Grant Hill all in his face uh he was just he was totally on fire and uh had a great game and and deserved to close it out mm, 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 mm. the summer of 2010 um did you guys think uh, that was your guys last run with Amar? did you think had you had conversations with them did you think he was gonna leave was there a chance did he say he was staying yeah. what was that like i thought he was gonna leave you know our ownership group was was adverse to going over the salary cap they also i think were scared to give amari you know with the troubles he'd have with his knee um both knees i think uh the full, you know the full max and and so i knew there was teams out there the knicks in particular that were going to give him the max so he would have to take a big pay cut not only i think in salary but also in in length of years so i thought it was pretty clear that there was a great chance he was going to go and uh you know that was it. That was the end of that kind of run, so to speak. And um, you know, it was uh, it was an incredible run for me. Playing with Amari was one of the best partners I had, and, and had so many incredible nights. You know, being able to play with him in transition or in pick and roll, and and had a lot of playoff success. Never got to the finals, but we're close a number of times, and uh, I'll never forget it. And that was that was an incredibly fun time in my career. something about how this place forms a different kind of person. On my high school team, we had five guys make the NBA. We had the county rocking. You mentioned Prince George's County. People know what it's about. It's the mecca of basketball. There are those who come before us upon whose shoulders we stand. Being from this area, you have to have tough skin. The gym became his sanctuary. PG County guy. Provide buckets for America. You take it like we're too serious. Prince George packs a lot of power, a lot of character. I don't really think they, they hear us. It's nothing that you can do to stop that competitive edge. We're pushing the community and the culture forward. It's just in the water. This life was all I ever wanted. I'm not leaving. Not yet. I was hoping you'd say that. We gotta hit the streets, make some money. People like us must destroy people like him. Showtime free at Showtime.com.